Let's rewind the clock here. Let's travel all the way back to ancient times. We're going to go all the way back to the summer of 2021. Now, it was a very confusing time to be in America. The country was coming off all those peaceful protests from the summer of 2020. Peaceful rallies in major cities across America that featured burning buildings, sidewalks that were turned into porta potties by professional defecators, climate activists protesting global warming by burning gas powered vehicles and watching those dangerous emissions rise into the the clouds. During the summer of 2021, deacons at Woke United Methodist, they were trying to implement change. Hope and change. Yes, we can. Men were becoming women. Some parents were taking their children to drag shows instead of drag races. Corporate America was baptized and born again, dedicating their companies to fighting the good fight and preaching the good word. The NBA embraced mythical racism. The NHL embraced the pride. A young Dylan Mulvaney was working hard to save money to film and document their journey of becoming a woman. It was a time when many people in the country were on their knees, kneeling for the national anthem, kneeling in prayer to the woke oak tree tree. Corporations, they were looking to take advantage of what they thought was the new populist movement. Corporations like Victoria's Secret. The company was started in 1977 by a man named Roy Raymond. Now, Roy started the company because he was embarrassed to walk into department stores to buy his wife lingerie. Now, he eventually sold the company for $7 million. Fast forward a few years later, Victoria's Secret is worth several billion dollars and Roy Raymond jumps off the Golden Gate. Bridge. True story. Now, for decades, Victoria's Secret, it was the brand known for promoting beautiful, sexy women. The Victoria's Secret angels became household names. Heidi Klum, Giselle Boonjen, Tyra Banks, Miranda Kerr. Now, what do all of these women have in common? Men enjoy looking at them in lingerie. Unless you're a regular patron of Club Shay Shay, of course. In that case, you prefer looking at Tom Brady over Giselle Boonjen. Now, for decades, Victoria's Secret was a trend-setting brand. And during the summer of 2021, they were looking to take advantage of another trend. They took a look at their board of directors and noticed they had a very serious problem. Oh my, we lack diversity! We must rectify this situation immediately! They replaced the toxic masculinity on their board of directors with women who identify as feminist. You know, because feminist, they are known for knowing exactly what men want. They also launched an exciting new marketing campaign. Those sexy angels modeling those bras and panties, gone. The fantasy bra, which was decorated with diamonds and gems and was designed to support the real gems that it covered, gone. There would be no more beautiful women. There would be no more sexy models at Victoria's Secret. No, 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 no. Men don't want to look at beautiful women. This is the era of body positivity. Men want to see sexy women like the Lizzo sitting on the beach outside of their natural oceanic habitat modeling a precious thong bikini. Ooh, sissy. I'm assuming that Victoria's Secret thought that grown men dreamed about going back in time to the days when they were prepubescent boys, because that is the only reason I can think of that makes sense for their decision to hire Megan Rapino to be the face of the new and improved Victoria's Secret. June 2021, Megan Rapino gives an interview to the New York Times. Now, she didn't grant this interview to talk about her painfully boring soccer career. I mean, the Megster. She is not known for being a semi-professional soccer player. She is known for being a professional political activist. The New York Times. They wanted all the exciting details about this new marketing campaign for a company known for featuring the sexiest women in the world and why that company would suddenly decide to make Megan Rapino the new face of their company. The Mexter told the New York Times, In the past, Victoria's Secret has promoted a dangerous message. It was patriarchal. It was sexist. It was downright misogynist, damn it! This company was dedicated to toxic masculinity instead of being dedicated to feminism. <laughs> Imagine that. A company that promoted beautiful women was targeting the male demographic. Huh. I wonder why.
Instead of women like Heidi Klum, this new and improved Victoria's Secret, they promoted women like Eileen Gu. Casey, who in the hell is Eileen Gu? Longtime subscribers of this channel, you guys might remember Eileen. She is the young woman who was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area who decided to represent China in the 2020 Olympics. Why did she do that? Because she could not stand America. Ooh, that's sexy. Now, to be honest with you, I think Eileen Gu was actually onto something. I think she was ahead of her time. All these athletes who complain about America, let's have all them represent other countries in the Olympics. Matter of fact, why don't they go live there too? I wish Gwen Berry and Megan Rapinoe had the same level of dedication as Eileen Gu. Victoria's Secret, they also hired Paloma El Cesar. Why? Diversity, damn it! They hired Paloma to show that Victoria's Secret was dedicated to inclusion. All of those young aspiring Lizzos, they need representation too. The company also hired Valentina Sampaio. Now don't let the lipstick fool ya. Growing up as a child, Valentina was described using he, him pronouns. Over the past couple of years, the company has taken inclusivity to a new level. They have really been listening to the advice of Megan Rapino. Recently, Victoria's Secret organized a fashion show. Watch it for yourself. I'll let you decide for yourself what you think of that, but purely from a business perspective, it doesn't make sense to me. It cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe millions, to design clothing and organize runway shows. I would think when you're designing clothing, you're trying to appeal to the largest market that you can. What percentage of the market do you think they appeal to there? If I had to guess, it's less than 1%. Now, I can't get into the minds of the people who organized that event, but it almost feels like exploitation. Damn sure a virtue signal, but you guys get the point. Over the past few years, Victoria's Secret, they have abandoned the formula that made them a multi-billion dollar company. They quit focusing on men, or what they're now calling toxic masculinity, and they began focusing on women, real women like Megan Rapinoe. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how did this impact sales? Did this innovative idea work? <laughs> well, it depends on your definition of success. Did this marketing strategy make Victoria's Secret more appealing to the parishioners of Woke United Methodist? Definitely. But there were two problems with that strategy. One, members of Woke United Methodist, they make up a very small portion of the overall population. And two, those identifiers, they don't buy or wear Victoria's Secret. They don't wear lingerie. Before this campaign fully launched in 2021, Victoria's Secret, they did $7.5 billion in sales. Billion. Fast forward to this year, the company is projecting $6.2 billion, a 5% decline from the decline from last year, and a loss of $1.3 billion when compared to 2020. Now, who would have thought that a board of directors made up of feminists and the brilliant mind of Megan Rapinoe would have absolutely no idea what real men want? This woke marketing campaign, it has been such a huge embarrassing failure that Victoria's Secret, they have decided to abandon it altogether. Translation, they fired Megan Rapino. According to Fox Business, the company is going back to the basics. Now you might be wondering, why did they go with this direction to begin with? <laughs> According to Fox Business, Victoria's Secret, they received favorable reviews on the internet with their woke marketing campaign. But those favorable reviews, they didn't translate into sales. Huh. Where have I heard this strategy before? Where have I heard about a company making business decisions based on the reactions they receive on Twitter? Oh yeah, the worldwide leader in woke, ESPN. How has that worked out for ESPN over the past five or ten years? Ratings are in the pooper. Network has not created a new star in the past ten years. They were so desperate for star power, they went and broke the bank for Pat McAfee. And to the surprise of no one, Pat McAfee can't even save ESPN.
This is what happens when you neglect your customer base. This is what happens when you cater to the shit fucks and you neglect the people that pay your salary. I don't need an education from Wharton Business School to know that this marketing strategy from Victoria's Secret would end in huge embarrassing failure. You know why Playboy featured unclothed women instead of dudes? Because dudes don't want to look at other dudes. And most dudes, they don't want to look at what they're now calling plus-sized women. You know what would happen if Playboy featured the Lizzo as their centerfold? They would have sold as many copies as Jamel Hill's autobiography. None. It is abundantly clear at this point that Megan Rapino absolutely destroys everything that she's involved with. Remember that marketing campaign with Subway two or three years ago? I believe it launched right before the Olympics. Subway hired the Megster to be the face of their company. If I remember correctly, they were even giving away free sandwiches. Now Subway, they told their franchise owners, expect huge crowds, we need all hands on deck to make these free shit sandwiches. Guess what happened? No one, no one showed up to Subway that day. Sales were tanking so fast that franchise owners, they begged corporate to distance the company from Megan Rapino. She destroyed Victoria's Secret. She destroyed the U.S. women's team in soccer. Megan Rapino, she would chastise teammates who refused to kneel for the national anthem. She completely divided that locker room. Her crowning achievement was winning the battle for equal pay, which guaranteed that players would receive money they haven't earned and completely deprived them of their motivation to get better. Their latest performance at the World Cup was uninspiring and completely embarrassing. Megan Rapino has played in the NWSL since its inception in 2013. How's that league doing? How are they performing? She is like cancer. She destroys everything that she's involved with from the inside out. But give me your thoughts. After two years of declining sales and after their business relationship with the Megster destroyed the company brand, Victoria's Secret, they part ways with Megan Rapino and Woke United Methodist for that matter. Subway, Victoria's Secret, the NWSL, the U.S. women's soccer team. Does Megan Rapino destroy everything that she's involved with? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate every one of you guys and your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.